Hi there and welcome back to the Chicoscopy Studios here in Geneva. I'm joined again by Carl Gustav Londin. Carl, welcome back. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. So what kind of renewable ocean energy sources do you see on the horizon at the moment? So, of course, there's a lot of discussions these days about how can we find new renewable, uh, sustainable type of energy. And one of them that we've seen a lot uh, being developed over the, the last decade or so is the wind farms. So already we have a significant amount in production. It's quite a lot of new ones under production. Beyond that, there's several other ones also. Wave energy has, I think, making some good progress. And there, more often than not, you have some sort of anchor on the bottom and then you have piston or something which generates a certain amount of energy. Uh, there's sometimes these more snake-like uh, things in the water. Uh, another thing that is uh, trying to, to use uh, would be ocean currents. So the simple version of that is to have a, a barrage, a sort of a small dam that you build in an estuary. Uh, some parts of the world have very large tidal ranges, so it can be um, 12 meters or so, which of course means there's a lot of energy moving out every day, twice. Uh, so that can generate a lot of energy. But if we look at the potential, it's probably only a couple of percent of the energy needs of the planet, so it's not going to be that important, but there are some, some ones being built right now. The other one would be ocean currents, which if you think of the Gulf Stream or so on, are probably on the two orders of magnitude greater than all the the dams that we built on land already. So there's a lot of energy there, but we really don't have the, the means of tapping that yet. So we have a lot more research to do on that. Other areas would be ocean thermal energy conversion. Here you're looking at the difference between warm water and cold water, and you're trying to utilize that in terms of, of driving the system, like a reversed uh, refrigerator in a sense. And another one uh, would be perhaps looking at um, the osmosis effect, so between fresh water and salt water. And there is a plant like that running already in, in Norway. However, I think the potential on these other uh, sources are quite limited and I wouldn't think they'll be that important in terms of supplying the world with energy. So you mentioned Norway there, so where are the best places to kind of reap the most for the opportunities? Well, of course, when it comes to wind farms, it's often a question of where do you have permanent winds? So one of the important things here will be, you know, what's the possibility that, that you can sustain it? Uh, no energy uh, grid can really take much more than 15% of one renewable because uh, you'll have variations. There are times you don't have a wind. There are times when you'll have peak demand. So you will always have to have backups of energy that you can put readily on with of a press of a button. So anything that's renewable in the sense of unpredictable is, is not so good. Ocean currents could be more reliable, although they do shift as well. So you probably would have to be able to move around at some certain level. And do you see any risks in these forms of energy? Well, one of the things we, we also looked at was what are the impacts on biodiversity? And um, it turns out you have a number of things that are coming up. With wind farms, you have the risk of collisions, either from tank ships or cruise ships or whatever. Normally, they would obviously know where they are, but if there's something wrong with their steering mechanism or you have a very bad storm, for example. Uh, another type of impact would be birds, and particularly birds of prey flying straight into these propellers. And that we've seen in a number of places where there's been significant impact. Um, some other places we are wondering what's happening with the energy cables. So, of course, there's a magnetic field around any kind of cable you put in the ocean. So there might be a, a certain risk there. Um, and then potentially down the road also you'll modify habitat or you'll change uh, certain types of areas. However, there's also some positive opportunities. So one of them would be working with uh, these uh, new installations to provide new habitat, which is not bottom trawled or is, doesn't have an industrial fishing going on in them. So they de facto become small marine protected areas. However, we also see new installations like we see here as a, a fundament for a, for a wave uh, plant, there is a risk that you have a, a new place for invasive, alien invasive species to settle. So suddenly we're opening up new habitat and that means new species can come in, take over and then perhaps turn the ecosystem around to something quite different. And in regards to being cost effective, will this kind of energy ever be profitable? I think it's quite a far ways away, particularly now that we're seeing the hydrocarbon prices being so low. I wouldn't be overly optimistic. I'd be surprised if we are able to actually make this profitable. Uh, so pretty much all of them right now are receiving subsidies. Now, in many countries what you have is 
the conventional energy, the hydrocarbons or uh, nuclear or, or, or uh, dams are subsidizing other new renewables to try to introduce them. Uh, over time, I think that's going to be a difficult proposition. Some countries might still feel they can afford that, but I think many of them will not perhaps sustain that forever. Here in Europe, we see a number of countries like Germany and parts of Scandinavia uh, going in in a reasonably large way for subsidizing uh, these renewables. Um, it could lead to new innovations that might cap, cut the, the cost, but it could also basically sustain an industry which can't stand on its own two feet. Well, Carl, thank you so much for coming into the studios again. It was a pleasure, as always. Thank you so much for having me. Well, that's all that we have time for today. But for all the latest Dukascopy updates, do keep clicking back. Goodbye for now.